This is YouTube video series video number 9 on balancing chemical equations. A chemical equation is a statement that uses chemical formulas to show the identities and relative amounts of substances involved in a chemical reaction. Basically what that means is I'm going to show what I put in and what I get out based on the reaction itself. In our example here we see that I have, I'm putting in one solid aluminum atom plus two gaseous bromine atoms and getting out one aluminum atom and three bromine atoms in the form of solid aluminum bromide. Now the whole key behind chemical equations and balancing in general is that the, they always follow, follow what's called the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass says that well, basically whatever you put in is what you get out. Matter is neither created nor destroyed in an ordinary chemical reaction. Okay, so everything has to balance out. Now, if I look here, I see that I have one aluminum atom on both sides of the reaction, but on one side I have two bromine atoms, and on the other side I have three. So this equation is not balanced. This figure shows the balanced equation for the reaction between aluminum and bromine. So to do this, what I do is I look and I see that I have two aluminum atoms on the left now, two on the right. 3 times the subscript of, of 2 equals 6 bromine atoms. 2 times the subscript of 3 on the right equals 6 bromine atoms. So my equation is now balanced because I have the same amount of mass, same amount of matter on both sides. Now, a quick definition. A coefficient is a chemical equation in a chemical equation is the number written in front of a reactant or product describing the lowest whole number ratio of the amounts of all the reactants and products. This is the only thing in a chemical reaction that we can change. We can write numbers out in front that are going to multiply by the subscripts throughout. We can never change the subscripts, and we can never write a coefficient in the middle of a compound, only before. So, the steps for balancing equations. The first thing we always want to do is what, write what's called a skeleton equation for the reaction. So we make sure the chemical formulas correctly represent the substances, and I can't emphasize that enough because if you write the wrong formulas, you will not be able to balance the equation or you'll balance it incorrectly. An arrow separates the reactants from the products, and a plus sign separates multiple reactants and products. You also want to show the physical states of all reactant and products, solid, liquid, gas, and what's called aqueous, which just means dissolved in water. So. The next step is we want to count the atoms of the elements in the reactants. If a reaction involves identical polyatomic ions in the reactants and products, count each polyatomic ion as a single element. This reaction does not involve any polyatomic ions. Two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of chlorine are reacting. So as you can see, he wrote H2 plus Cl2 yields, and underneath he wrote two atoms of H plus two atoms of Cl. Step three, now we're going to do the same thing on the product side. Count the atoms of the products in the, react, in the reaction. One atom of hydrogen and one atom of chlorine are produced in the form of HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. So I have my full equation now going to step four. H2 plus Cl2 yields two HCl would be the balanced equation because I'm allowed to stick a two as a coefficient out in front of the HCl. That's going to multiply by a 1 in front of the H and a 1, I'm sorry, a 1 after the H and a 1 after the CL, which are usually ignored um, just by convention. So now I have two H's and two CL's on both sides. You never change a subscript in a chemical formula to balance an equation because doing so changes the identity of the substance. So, for instance, if I tried to balance this by changing CL2 to CL3, CL2 and CL3 are not the same uh, chemical. So I cannot do that. The only thing I can do is write the numbers that are out in front, the coefficients. So, step five. I'm going to write the coefficients in their lowest possible ratio. The coefficients should be the smallest possible whole numbers. The ratio of one hydrogen to one chlorine to two hydrogen chloride is the lowest possible ratio because the coefficients cannot be reduced further and still remain whole numbers. You don't want to go into fractions. Um, if, if the case were when I balanced it, I, I got two hydrogen, I'm sorry, two, two, four, I could reduce that down to one, one, two, and I would have to do so. So finally, I'm going to check my work. I'm going to make sure that the chemical formulas are written correctly. Then I'm going to check the number of atoms of each element is equal on both sides of the equation. So I look again, I go two atoms of H, two atoms of Cl on the products, on the reactant side, yield two atoms of H plus two atoms of Cl on the product side. I'm balanced. So again, the most fundamental law in chemistry is the law of conservation of mass. I check to make sure I have the same thing going in, the same thing coming out. 
Balanced equations show and follow this law. So finally, this is just an outline of um, the steps to follow in a chemical equation. So the first thing I want to do is I run a, write a skeleton equation. I'm going to write the reactants on the left, the products on the right. Steps two and three, I'm going to count the atoms of the reactants and products. Step four, I'm going to add slash adjust the coefficients, number of atoms of each element on the right, number of atoms of each element on the left. They must be equal. That's the key to the entire process of balancing an equation. So I go to step five. I reduce coefficients to the lowest possible whole number ratio. And then finally, I check my work to make sure the law of conservation of mass is satisfied and that all uh, atoms are balanced. So real fast, let's look at an example. Balance the following equation. CaCl2 plus NaOH yields NaCl plus CaOH2. Now, one key is that OH is an ion. It's called hydroxide. So we're going to keep this together when we count our atoms. So, following the steps we find, on the left we have 1 Ca, 2 Cl's, 1 Na, and 1 OH, keeping that ion together. On the right we have 1 Ca, 1 Cl, 1 Na, and 2 OH. So to balance, we start with the Cl's. We want to try to stay away from hydrogen and oxygen as long as possible. So we place a 2 on the right, which then is going to make 2 Cl's, but also 2 Na's. So then I have to go back over to the left then and balance the NAs, which I do by putting a 2 out in front of the NaOH. When I do that, I also balance my OHs. So my entire equation is then balanced. I will have 1 Ca on both sides, 2 Cl's on both sides, 2 NAs on both sides, and 2 OHs on both sides. So that leaves us with the following equation. CaCl2 plus 2 NaOH yields 2 NaCl plus CaOH2. And when you check this, it satisfies the law of conservation of mass and it is balanced.